this series of videos will be on building and programming your own RFID reader writer based on PN532 and Arduino. So this video will be helpful if you are a electronics hobbyist, if you are a software developer who wants to integrate RFID into your applications, if you are a, a student of electrical, electronics or computer science who would like to learn this concept or who would like to do a project using RFIDs. Since I will not be teaching how to program in Arduino, so you must have a basic knowledge of Arduino. You must have written a few programs in Arduino. Even You must know how to connect the wires and this is very important you should know that the VCC and ground should never ever be touched together who am I? So I am a computer science engineer I've been designing and programming software since 28 years so it's since long ago I've been designing and programming RFID since uh, 2012 not that long ago. What will you be learning in these videos? You will learn how to build a fully working RFID reader writer. You will understand various components required to build. So you will also understand what are the libraries required and how to find various documents in internet and also understand few of them you will know the working of the PN532 and and internals of it and you're also going to learn how to build a simple Windows application using RFID the components required is you need a PN532 based RFID reader writer uh, this you can buy from um, anywhere from internet or I buy most of my uh, components from eBay and Amazon.com. You need a microcontroller, which is uh, the Arduino microcontroller. It can be any variants, Nano, Mega, Uno. Again, you can buy this from uh, website, uh, internet. I'll be using in this series of videos the Arduino Nano. You need connecting wise because because of the the way or because of the type of the components I'll be using you will end up using only female to female connecting wires and you can buy with either 20 centimeter which is uh, easy for you to wire you need RFID tags you can use uh, MIFI classic ultralight N tag or MIFI this far etc you need a USB cable and a few LEDs and buzzer this the last thing is optional so sometimes you might find a starter kit in eBay which includes all these things or you might end up buying them separately so this is what the components uh, will be so this is the PN532 reader writer you find them in various sizes and from different manufacturers I have chosen this in a random so some are red some are blue and this is the Arduino Nano and the reason I use nano is this is uh, very small compact and as I said you can use a LED so this is mainly used to tell the users that whether something is uh, right or wrong or if something didn't work probably can flash different colors red green so that's the reason why I have used a RGB, a three color LEDs. You can buy this from eBay. 
and these are the female to female uh, connecting wires so you can buy this from uh, eBay as well and obviously when you buy the kit you will get a USB cable as well so some of the basics you need to understand um, in Arduino is you're going to use the Arduino ID to create the Arduino programs we can connect this PN532 reader writer in three different ways the SPI the I2C and the UART SPI and I2C are easier whereas uh, UART is not because you need some additional components which uh, I myself have not done it so I'm not going to speak about that so I'll be showing you only the SPI and uh, I2C okay so first and foremost you need the Arduino IDE Arduino IDE for creating uh, the programs and we're going to need the library for uh, PN532 you can search this on internet which I'm going to show you now and some of the libraries you can get from uh, github or later on once you understand the working of PN532 probably you can also write uh, your own library which I have done it uh, in my project so uh, probably you now I will show you in maybe after 10 or 15 videos later so go to Google and search Arduino IDE and this will take you to the official site of Arduino and keep in mind Arduino is a open source uh, project and you can download various versions but I always go with the latest one and in here you can there are a number of options for you to uh, install I'll be working only with the Windows uh, because uh, I'm, I'm not comfortable with the Linux or a Mac so I always go with the zip version so in this version you download the zip file unzip it in a folder and start using it so I find this is uh, comfortable probably um, this method does not need any admin access to your laptop or environment so I have used the version I think probably 1.6.9 but a new version has come here and keep in mind installing Arduino IDE is it's so simple you just have to unzip and start using it next you'll be needing uh, the PN532 library for Arduino if you go to Google and type this I uh, will get uh, so many hits here and you can use any one of them but uh, I'll be using the first one which is a library from uh, ADF root and I've used this in uh, many projects so I know this library works and again this is uh, part of the open source and if you read the license or txt file it does allow you to use and with few uh, a license agreement so you can again I'm going to show in detail how to get this but it's as easy as click here download a zip file so you need Arduino IDE and this ADF route to start working uh, through this uh, videos this is how you connect using SPI so what I have here is the PN532 uh, the reader writer and the Arduino Nano so I also have 
the RGB uh, LEDs as well. So as you can see here, the connections are very obvious. Say the 5 volt pin of uh, PN532 will end up connecting the 5 volt pin of Arduino. The SCK pin here, SCK pin goes to the pin number 13 and the next pin is the, the MISO that is the master in slave out that is this line. The MISO goes to pin number 12 and the next is the MOSI the master out slave in connects to uh, pin number 11 and this particular library what we are using doesn't need connection to the RST pin is this one and the IRQ pin the ground is connected to the ground pin here so you need here one two three four five six female to female wires for connecting to SPI if you want to connect to an RGB LED and if you want to you know vary the the light intensities you need the pins in Arduino what are called the PWM pins that's the pulse width modulation pins so from the Arduino doc documentation you know that D6 D6 D5 and uh, probably D3 these are the three pins so I'll be using the red pin and the green pin and as you can see again it's very straightforward the RGB module has got four pins the the blue the red the green and the ground so the ground goes to a ground pin here the red goes to pin number D6 and the green goes to pin D5 so as I mentioned in my previous slides connecting using SPI is very straightforward it's very very easy so this PN532 uh, reader writer board supports three different ways of uh, connection and as I mentioned before the URT SPI and I2C most of these boards you know they do come with a, a jumper settings and this is the back of this uh, the chip I have used. So as you can see here there are switches S0 and S1 and you have to set them to 0 and 1 if you want to use SP connection or 10 if you want to I2C or 0, 0 if you're connecting to UART okay. So sometimes you know these switches are not very obvious okay so you have to uh, look around and find them so this particular board comes with a fused uh, connection mode so as you can see here there is no switch so it's already been soldered so if you want to make any any adjustment to this connection you have to remove the solder and as you can see here this is the switch L0 which is uh, connected to 0 and S1 is connected to 1 so we have got S0 S1 which is set to 0 and 1 and if you see the back of this uh, this board this refers to the SPI so to keep in mind this is the only problem with this board now you should know how to solder and uh, the desolder So this is uh, one more PN532 uh, reader writer board which you can buy uh, from internet. I distinguish between this and the first one as a green and red board. And this board is also more or less similar to the green board. So the connections are again very obvious. You just have to connect the VCC to the 5 volts here and the ground to the ground pin here and SCK to pin number 13 
have to look it's pin number 13 and the miso goes to pin number 12 and uh, the mosi goes to pin number 11 and ss ss is nothing but it's a chip select so ss goes to the pin number 10 and here the most important thing here is so this uses two jumper switches so as you can see here it has got two switches switch one and switch two and the top position is on and the bottom is off so and also the the printing on this board says for SPI connection you must have uh, it's a zero the switch one is zero and uh, switch two should be one as you can see here I have already uh, configured this board I have got uh, uh, the switch one it's a zero that's the it's just slide it down and switch two is up okay so this board I would say it's easy to configure if you want to set this for I2C connection you just have to make it as uh, uh, 1 and 0 or HSU which is high speed uh, URT you can set that to 0 0 so otherwise you know it's this connection is more or less very similar to the green board